Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I am a full-time reseller on both eBay and Amazon. And today I am in my very own storage unit. I got my very first storage unit and I have a very good reason why because at the end of this video we are going to go from empty to full. Tomorrow I am going to pick up three pallets of inventory. So we got two firsts in this video. First storage unit and first pallets that I have bought. And we're gonna go through uh, them together and see what I got and how much I can make off them. So it's a little late. I really gotta get out of here before the uh, facility closes, but stick around because we're gonna have some real fun with this one. Roll the intro. I purchased three pallets of inventory at auction. Two, I knew what they were, and one, I was a little unsure of, but I decided to buy anyway, hoping it would turn out okay. We set off on September 19th and drove four and a half hours to pick them up. We could have shipped them, but it was cheaper to just do it ourselves. Where it leads is pure Michigan. Once we arrived, they got us loaded up, but without a dock height truck for the forklift to drive into, we just settled for breaking down the pallets and moving all the boxes forward manually. A little messy, but it worked. We just stopped for gas and I figured this would be a, a pretty good time to stop and have another little check in. We're still about three hours out from home um, and the reality is setting in. Um, I've actually wanted to go into pallets for a while, but I've been waiting around for two things. Number one, the right ones to come along and number two, for my kids to be in school. Because up until this point, I really haven't had the time to you know, invest in doing a pallet because it's a lot of time to sort through this stuff. Um, but because both of those things have finally happened, I've finally been able to take that next step. But I hate spending money. I have been a frugal person my entire life. Um, and we're currently saving up to buy some land to build our forever home on. And so spending this for me, it's a very big chunk of money on this stuff is like, it gives me almost a panic attack where it's like setting and you just spent this amount of money and look at this stuff. You're gonna have to throw like probably 30% of it away. And so I'm like, I'm having like a mental head rush, you know, like it's, it's freaking out. The, the panic is setting in, but that's how I react to everything. So I'm trying to like stay calm because I've done the math. I know how this is supposed to work out and it will, I just have to tell myself that. Um, but that's the reality of these things. Like some people will drop money on a pallet and be like, oh, it's all junk, tee hee, that's fine. I'm just gonna like, you know, it, it's no big deal. I can just pull that money out of my butt. But for me, this is like, it's a big sum of money. Even though it's not really a risk, I knew what I, knew what I was getting into, but sometimes it takes a while for the gravity of what you've done to like set in. Hopefully everything with unloading goes smoothly. Um, and then I can just sort of breathe a sigh of relief before I start digging into these boxes and sorting stuff out. Okay, so I let everything marinate for a day. We got in late on Tuesday, filled everything up and went home. By the time we returned the truck, it was like 11 o'clock at night and I was super beat. And then Wednesday is my big thrifting day. So I just did my normal Wednesday routine and now it is Thursday afternoon and I can finally start uh being confronted with what i've done anyway also don't mind my hair i tried one of those overnight um heatless curl rods that have been all over tiktok for the past year and i feel like i just look like i got struck by lightning or something so ignore that so it's not completely full it's just kind of stacked weird i have my thing that i'm going to sort all of the individual beauty products into and just some other stuff that we shoved in here so we can go home so now I gotta go through this and see what's here. And like I said, I know for sure one of the pallets was like mostly junk and I was hoping for something good. So I'm gonna go through these and start showing you what I got. So there's two kinds of boxes in here. One is these um, big ones with the arrow on them and the other are these flat ones that say Regis. What I had my eye on were the ones that said we just I bought an entire pallet of those plus one pallet that was half these and half some other stuff that 
it wasn't very well described what it was and it turned out that it's like basically garbage so i'm gonna have to dig those out of here as well um so i need to open up these these big fat boxes to go through them and see what's actually in them because that's the contents of the mystery palette and um i can also show you what's in the regis boxes because that's the good stuff Okay, so far the mystery palette, which I should note was not advertised as a mystery palette. It was advertised as a mixed palette. Um, the photos showed three things and then the title mentioned three completely different things. And the photos showed face masks, these sheer passion hoodies, or sweatshirts, I'm not really sure, and um, hairbrushes but the title said it was going to come with that stuff plus redken hairspray and um big sexy hair kits and biolage shampoos so they had another listing that had redken hairsprays in it and it was these rare ones that are worth 80 dollars a piece and so I was like, well, I could make this entire palette worth it if I find just 10 of those hairsprays in here. Um, I haven't gotten any hairsprays yet so far. It's just face masks, face masks, face masks, two hoodies, and um, some cost cutters sweaters. So I'm gonna keep going through these and see if I hit any gold because I think it's gonna turn out to be mostly garbage for that one. I got to another box that has the advertised hairbrushes and some of these design line um, men's pomade things. I looked these up. They're basically worthless. There's somebody struggling to sell a case of 24 of them for $24. Again, I didn't buy this palette for this stuff. I bought it on a um, assumption or hope, I'd rather say that there'd be a couple of cases of that Redken hairspray that they mentioned in the listing, in the listing title. Because so I was like, well, if I get just two cases of that product in this mostly crap palette, it'll pay for itself. So it was 100% a gamble. And so far it is absolutely not paying off. Okay, so I finally got a box that wasn't complete garbage. It's got these Johnny B Feel the Vibe kits. There are currently three listed on eBay and none sold. They're trying to get like $25 a box for them. Doesn't look like it's a very in-demand product, so I'll have to sell those off really cheap. And then there's a ton of these Wella Magmas in here. They all seem to be the same number 89. Um, this is, I think there were maybe 30 listed and 7 sold, so they don't sell very often. They don't have a great sell-through rate, but they do sell for around $25 a piece when they do sell. So, might lot them up and just sell them off really cheap, but at least it's not complete garbage. Hooray! Oh, and there's also some of these I've pulled out of the um, garbage boxes. It's basically just entire boxes of these tea tree shampoo and conditioner sets there are a few people selling these packets in a big lot on ebay i think i saw someone selling 25 of them for 16 dollars so again scraping a little bit of my money back out of this one crap palette but i suppose that's better than nothing let's keep digging and see if there's anything good Anything that was actually advertised, because so far none of the stuff that I bought it for in the title has come up yet. Still making my way through, but I finally found something that doesn't suck, like really doesn't suck. So there's two boxes of these that I've come across in, in these bigger boxes. And they, each one of these boxes has one of these, two of these, and one of these. And these are some sort of Paul Mitchell um, keratin thing. And each one of these products actually sells for $50 each. So one of these boxes is $200 and I have two of them. So that's $400. Now again, the listed to sold ratio is mildly concerning. It's about 50-50 where there's twice as many listed as sold, but these still sell and these sell really well. So I'm $400 up on the, the one crap palette. And then of course, remember, I still got these Regis boxes, which is the whole reason I bought all this stuff. Um, 
to show you that I'm not completely crazy. All right, I just finished going through all of the mystery boxes and stuff. Not a single Redken hairspray, not a single big sexy hair kit, not a single Biolage shampoo. What they put in the title to advertise this lot is not here, which in my opinion is misleading and it's fraud because if you'll remember, me, I'm the one calling it a mystery palette. This was not advertised as a mystery palette. This was advertised by title. Here's some stuff in it, including but not limited to. And then of course the pictures showed face masks and hairbrush, which are here. So I don't care if I have to go full Karen and bark all the way up the ladder or do something about this. I was misled. I spent money on something that I would not have spent money on if they had correctly advertised it. So I'm gonna be making some phone calls. So let me turn this around and show you what everything in that palette was. After condensing down, I ended up with two boxes of hair brushes, two boxes of Design Line Men's Pomade, one box of various cost cutters apparel, the stuff worth the most, two boxes of Paul Mitchell keratin treatments, two sheer passion sweaters, which was one of the things they had in the photos, so I thought maybe if I got a couple of boxes of sweaters, I could sell them for $20 a piece, but nope, only two. Five boxes of the tea tree sample packets, a box of Wella Magma and Johnny B kits. Here's all the empty boxes I condensed down. And then I didn't know what these were at first. They're all wrapped in plastic and they look like capes or something. I don't know. And finally, like 12 boxes of cotton face masks that I ended up donating to the big regional Goodwill hub for textile recycling. It's a new day and I'm gonna start talking about these Regis boxes next because this is what I actually wanted out of all of this. I have a total of 75 of these Regis boxes inside each one of the Regis boxes is eight bags of product. And then what's in the bags, I'm sure you're wondering. Well, that would be an assortment of trial size products. All right, I got my bag dumped out on the floor of the storage unit here. This is what comes in one bag. And I have 600 of these bags. Now, people who've been following me for a while or have watched other videos of mine, their eyes are probably going to one specific product. And that is this product right here, the Joyco Ice Spiker 1.7 ounce trial size. I sold the big size before, it's still super in demand. There's actually, because I did my research on this, I used Terapeak to look at the number of sales and sales velocity and all that to see what I could like reasonably expect out of selling this little size. And I found there's one um, person who has been selling them for the past year, maybe a little over a year, I think and has sold over 200 of them at around $30 a piece. So even if I was to undercut their price, you know, maybe $20 a piece if I wanted to do that, if I wanted to put them in a two pack and sell them for a little less, I don't know. The point is if I was just expecting $30 a piece times 600 of these, that's $18,000 in sales off of just one piece of those trial bags. So hopefully suddenly it starts to look a little less crazy. A lot of the stuff I might have to sell in packs of two or four for 10 to $15 a piece, but that's still basically like icing on the cake. This is the cake. Everything else is icing. It doesn't really matter what I sell them for or what I end up being profitable. Even if I only make a few bucks off of each sale, you have to times that by 600. And then, you know, this is, this is the epitome of churning smalls, which I'm self-described smalls lover i love flipping my smalls um and two it's gonna take time this is not gonna be like an overnight instant win lottery ticket it will absolutely take time for me to sell through all of this stuff but i knew that going into it and i was fine with that so that really begs the question would you spend the money that i spent which i haven't gotten to yet in order to then get a return on that money, but it takes time. So I guess that brings us to the most important question, which is what did I pay for all of this here, all of this craziness? So I will start to spell that out for you right now. Um, the hammer price on the full palette of these, which was 400 boxes, 
I paid $2,900. That's the hammer price. That's before any sort of taxes and fees that they add onto these things. For the half palette, which was 200 of these, and then 200 of the um, Biolage coconut kits, which are just garbage, I paid, I think, $1,200. And then for the self-described mystery palette that was supposed to come with Redken hairsprays and Biolage shampoos, as well as face masks and hairbrush, uh, but as you'll remember, it turned out that none of the good stuff was in there, I paid $1,100. And of that, the only things that were good in there were the uh, magma things that I can sell for $25 each. Some of those Paul Mitchell hair treatments, two boxes of those that I can sell for $400 total. And then um, some sweaters and of course the hairbrushes and the design line men's pots things. But those, those are not really going to be worth anything. I did find out what this was though. I was uh, listing one last night, or taking pictures of it rather, and I'm like, really, what is this? Is this like a cape? And then I realized it's an infinity scarf. And um, I have 42, 42 of these. So even if I sold them for 10 bucks a piece, that's $420. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to break even on that one, but I still haven't heard back from company because what I did was I sent them an email I know I said I was gonna send I was gonna call somebody up on the phone but let's be real my social anxiety can't handle being a Karen over the phone so I just typed out my thoughts in an email basically outlining like yo I think I was misled this is fraud hit me back because I feel I deserve some sort of uh, resolution to this because it's, it's BS let's be honest and then if we want to add miscellaneous fees in there there was, I have to add in the cost of the truck rental, the cost of the gas for the truck rental, and the cost of the storage unit. Now, you might have noticed, there's a big pole right in the middle of my storage unit. It's a 10 by 12 in a climate controlled facility. And because this pole's in it, I get a discount, which is fine with me. Um, I'm always looking for a deal as well as giving the deals. So when they're like, this is normally 99, but because it has a pole in it, it's only 78. I'm like, sold, let's do it. So once I have that garbage gone, I'll have that whole side open so I could technically put more stuff for my eBay business in here if I really wanted to, so I could have more space to expand. So right now I'm kind of at the limits of what I can do with my house storage. Um, I've been fine with it. I haven't felt like I really needed to go grab a storage unit to continue expanding, but it's nice to have. It certainly won't go to waste. And I did say climate controlled for a reason. I live in Ohio. It gets below freezing here. It gets up to 100 here. And this is all beauty products. I have to keep the temperature maintained so this stuff doesn't go bad. Anyway, I'm gonna kick the can to post-production, Heather, and we're gonna talk some other numbers, and I'm gonna see if I can give you like a final count on what I think everything's gonna sell for and how long I think it's gonna take. All right, so it is now mid-November, and I finally have time to sit and reflect upon this entire crazy ordeal. It took me until early November to process the last of the Regis boxes, I'd open them up, I'd take the stuff out of the bags, and I'd sort them into individual bins. Some of the sorting I did at the storage unit, but the majority I did on my living room floor. And not just me, but I had a tiny little employee helping me. I, I'm training to, to resell. <laughs> You're training to resell? Yeah. You're doing a great job. You're gonna make great resellers someday. My kids are always asking for ways to make money, and I try and give them simple tasks like this, like they can sort stuff pretty easily. My older one will help me with FBA. Sometimes he puts stuff in poly bags for me. Sometimes he'll remove price stickers. So I do try to get my kids involved when they're interested. Two hours later. Literally once a video. I processed the very last Regis box sorted everything in their bins, and that could have been the end of the story right there. And I think it would have been a pretty okay ending. But what happened when I contacted the company about their misrepresented palette? I sent an email on September 21st to the salesperson who reached out to me from the company, because when I was a registered bidder, he reached out to all the registered bidders a few days before the auction ended to see if they had any questions. And of course, yes, I brought my concerns up at that time, that what was listed in the title and what was sort of in the description and photos didn't really match 
because um, I was specifically interested to know what Redken hairsprays were possibly in the lot. He never responded. So I never got an answer to that question. I don't know why you'd reach out to see if anyone has questions and then say you'll get back to them and you never do. But that would be foreshadowing because he also never responded to this email that I sent on the 21st. Figuring that maybe he's just not the right person that I'm supposed to direct this concern to, I decided to send the exact same email on September 25th to the general company information and sales emails. I hate making phone calls. I don't know who loves making phone calls, so I had tried to avoid it, but I did reach out to them on the phone. It went about as well as you'd expect. Enter the extension you wish to call. To use the directory, press number sign. To leave a message, press star. The directory is not available. Using the dial pad, please enter the extension you wish to call. To use the directory, press number sign. To leave a message, press star. To reach an operator, please enter the mailbox number or press number sign to use the directory. To use the directory, the operator is not available. This mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages. Please try again later. I, I tried. The phone was a complete dud, nobody answered, and I couldn't find a way to talk to anyone. My next course of action was going to be seeing if the auction company could do anything for me because I didn't buy it directly from the company, I bought it through an auction house. Think like an eBay, but for liquidation kind of stuff. And we all know that eBay tends to have the buyer's back, maybe there's something the auction company could do for me. So I emailed them and they got back to me that I would have to work things out with the seller. I told them I'm trying but the seller is not answering. They asked if I would like to escalate this, and I said, yeah, I mean, why would I not? They decide to escalate things internally and try to reach out to the sellers themselves, but ultimately tell me, like, there's nothing they can do, I have to work things out with the seller, um, and they don't get involved in these kind of things. So at this point, I'm getting fed up because the company has still not responded to me, and the auction house is playing the not my problem game. But later in that same day that I escalated things with the auction house, I get my first email back from the company. Coincidence? I think not. Their first email was to mention that I was using the wrong lot number. Um, they wanted to make sure that we were on the same page and I responded, yes, you're right, I was calling it lot 134, I should have been calling it lot 132, but the problem still stands. A few days pass and they reach out to me again offering me a replacement palette with some sexy hair kits. And as much as my brain was screaming at me to just take it and be done with this whole thing because I, I was just annoyed at this point, I couldn't. I could not just say yes to this. Because again, what sexy hair kits? Approximately how many? What is the, what is the perceived value of this replacement? Because you could just be sending me another palette of crap. But since they opened the door to a replacement and that replacement included beauty products, I wondered if maybe they had some other beauty products on hand that I could swap for. I decided to do some hardcore research on this company, you know, the kind of research I should have done before I bid in the first place. And in doing so, I was able to turn up um, their inventory Google Doc, which showed like everything that they currently had in their warehouse. Um, because this company does liquidations, some of it's at auction and some of it they just sell direct. I went through the Google Doc like it was a menu to see if there was anything on it that I could be like, I would like this as a replacement. And I noticed that they had Super Sunday sales bags listed. And I was like, that's what I just bought at auction. You're telling me there's more? I got back to them and mentioned that I knew about the Google Doc and I had gone over it. Here's a few things I might be interested in, but if that's not available, I'd really like to focus on more of the sales bags. He came back with a few options to choose from. I did not like any of them except for more bags. I also offered to give them back the entire contents of the misadvertised lot. Number one, to show that I'm not like a scammer. I'm fine returning something for something else. And two, because like, I really don't want this stuff anyway. He confirms there's about 450 and that uh, they don't want the palette to be returned. I agree to this. He says, okay, we'll have them pulled and um, maybe at the end of next week, they'll be ready to go. That was on October 10th. The end of next week came and went and I heard nothing. I let another week go by and I sent another email and again, I heard nothing. 
So of course I'm like, oh God, here we go again. Um, they brushed me off. They said I was gonna get a replacement and now they're just gonna ignore me and not send anything. That's, that's awesome. I tried again on the phone and much to my horror, somebody picked up. It was the original salesperson I had spoken to way back when. He told me the person I was looking for that I had been emailing with was in a meeting, but he would uh, make sure that he got back to me. He didn't, but that salesperson did reach out to me again um, a few days later to say that my palette had been picked up and I'd be hearing from the freight company to schedule a delivery date. So I was like, oh. Okay, I guess that's fine. I did in fact get a call from the freight company the next day to schedule delivery, which would be the day after that. And the pallet was in fact finally delivered. I was shocked to find that it was actually far more than the 400 bags that we had discussed. It was actually closer to a thousand. So naturally I'm like, just happened <laughs> how did I come out ahead on this deal like I would have been completely fine with them sending me half as much but it seemed like they were just eager to get rid of stuff but this time instead of being packaged in those easy to maneuver small Regis boxes they were packed in these giant boxes with counts of 65 to 72 bags per box with each bag weighing 19.3 ounces that comes out to 78 and 87 pounds per box. And I had to move each one to my storage unit down the road. I could fit only three in my car at a time, which meant I would have to take five trips. They were so heavy that my car thought I had a passenger with me. A uh, shout out to this wheelie cart I got at Aldi for $15. I could not have done it without it. Every round of three became exponentially harder than the last as I got more tired. It does not help that I have really poor lifting form, um, but I got the job done and I'm no worse for wear. That's some real girl boss shit. The last box ended up exploding all over my driveway, so I just gave up and threw them in the back seat of my car. Um, you know why? Because they secured every box with one piece of tape. How many pieces of tape do you think we need for this extremely heavy box? One? Yeah, one. One'll do it. Now that everything is truly settled, everything is in my unit, and I have final totals, I can talk profits. I listed the items for sale on September 24th. I'm filming this on November 20th, so we're just about at the two month mark. At the time of recording, I've sold 510 of the It's a 10 keratin sprays, 158 Joico ice spikers, 20 of the eight packs of Biolage gel, two eight packs of the Niosin, at least I think that's how you say it, dry shampoo, 33 two packs of the Design Line leave-in conditioner spray, one four pack of the sexy hair creams, one two pack of the Redken dry shampoo, none of the lavender shampoos, and none of the Matrix uh, curl gels, but I actually haven't listed those yet because they have such a poor sell-through rate that I haven't decided what like lot amount I'm gonna sell them in. Of the valuable items in the junk palette, I have sold all five boxes of the tea tree sample packets and one of the Paul Mitchell keratin treatments and nothing else. So I guess nobody really wants those infinity scarves, even though I'm just trying to sell them for 10 bucks each. That brings me to a current gross sales of $9,745.02. The net sales on that is $5,900.23. So in just about two months, I have made all of my initial investment back and I'm making a profit. It would seem that I am on easy street now, right? Unfortunately not. About mid-November, my gravy train stalled on the Joycos as not one, but two large eBay um, beauty sellers decided to list large stocks of the 5.1 size, which is the big size, for um, $28 a piece and like $30 a piece. So like they completely tanked the market because those were selling for $70 a piece. One looks to have 100 and the other one looks to have 346. And of course they could be doing what I'm doing and not loading their entire totals in the listing I only re-up about 10 at a time so nobody can see my exact inventory totals, you know, so who knows what their real totals are. 
I'm in no rush though, so I'm just gonna wait it out and see what happens. Of the Joyco ones that I sold, 34 of them actually went to a drop shipper that I tracked to walmart.com. So if anyone sells there and like wants to push this person out and sort of undercut them, be my guest. Though one of the large eBay accounts also sells on Walmart and has listed their cheap 5.1s there as well. The It's a 10s have also slowed down because Amazon is back on the listing uh, with a vengeance. They were selling them at 10. They've now dropped the price to eight. It's fine though. I am like completely fine with all of this. Like I said, this was gonna be a long-term project for me. I wasn't gonna be focused on turning it all quickly. My initial investment is recouped and then some. I expect that it will take me another couple months to sort through the giant boxes of bags and get those all put in bins. Normally, I would be in no hurry for that, but something always comes up because a completely different large beauty seller on eBay reached out to me about buying out my whole inventory. They offered me $17 a unit for my Joyco's. Um, that would be about $23,000, assuming I have about 1,400 units left. That was before the other big accounts crashed the party and sort of tanked the price. So um, not really sure where we're at with that. We are still in talks though. So I guess we'll just have to see what happens. If anything, I'm not like dead set on wholesaling, um, but I'm also not ruling it out either. But that will be another update for another day. In the meantime, I'm gonna pose the question to you. What would you do in this situation? Would you take a bulk buyout deal and just sort of wash your hands of this stuff? Or would you be dead set on selling these things individually over the course of years and maybe make a little more money? I'm curious what everyone thinks, so definitely leave your answer in the comments. Also, if you live in Ohio or want to travel to Ohio and you're looking for bins inventory or you have a liquidation store or something, let me know because I'm definitely interested in wholesaling. Um, some of the slower moving products that uh, are not really worth my time to sell on eBay, but would make perfect bins inventory. So, you know, hit me up. Now, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so because I put out at least one video a month all about my full-time reselling adventures, be it selling on eBay or retail arbitrage for Amazon. Follow me on Instagram because I post little bite-sized pieces of my content there. I should also mention my Patreon. A lot of people asked me to start a bolo group and that's the closest thing you're gonna get. Every Monday, I post a handful of um, buy and hold opportunities, bolos, and Amazon leads. So if you're interested in getting that kind of news early, that's where I'm putting it. It'll still be in videos in the future though. If you're interested in getting help with beginner Amazon questions, like you just wanna have somebody in your pocket to ask these sort of questions to, I do have that tier, but it is currently full. I also have my Supernova supporter level. I limit that to two people. This month that is William and Jess. Thank you guys so much for supporting me in the channel. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, you guys are awesome and good luck out there with your sales. Now get out there, have fun and find something good.